Hello everybody, today we have a super interesting interview with Liran Zablo, who is a professional dropshipper who joined AutoDS content team and YouTube team to produce the best content and the most accurate dropshipping content for you. How are you today, Liran? I'm good, Leo. Thank you for having me and I'm super happy to be here. Amazing. I'm so excited about this interview because basically it's the first interview that we do with someone from the marketing team in AutoDS. So uh, let's start. So first, if you can, please introduce yourself a little bit. Where are you from? How did you start with dropshipping? Sure. Um, so I'm from Israel. I was born in Israel, but I lived in Hawaii for over 10 years. I'm guessing that's also where I got my English from. After that, I moved back to Israel, did the army for three years uh, in the military. After that, I found my job right away. Uh, just working as a computer salesman, nothing uh, too special. Uh, and a few years into that, I already realized that it's not something that I really wanted to do. And that, uh, you know, I started looking for something uh, for a better way uh, to start making money. And I wasn't chasing dreams that didn't exist. I knew that dropshipping was something that's actually happening. It's something that's going on, something that a lot of people are making money off of. So I really wanted to learn this, you know, this dropshipping, what it is, the whole industry. And uh, it ended up actually being a really good and successful thing. How did you come to this, to the industry for the first time? So uh, I started, you know, searching Google, you know, about dropshipping and what it is, what it's about, all the kinds of uh, different methods that you can dropship from. And um, naturally, Facebook started, you know, shooting all kinds of uh, dropshipping ads and dropshipping courses and come learn from us and check out this mentor and this course. And I ended up, um, you know, doing some research on all the courses that I have available. Uh, people that actually took those courses, people that actually wrote reviews on those courses. And I pinpointed the one that looks, you know, the most, uh, that looks best for my, for my needs, for my, uh, for what I need. I signed up, uh, paid the commission price. And like uh, I said before, it actually ended up being a very successful thing. And I'm very glad that I did it. Amazing. Um, it was a physical call, so like an online call. Yeah, so the course was physical. It uh, had two physical classroom meetings where we actually met up in classrooms. Uh, we were about 10 or 15 people uh, in the class with uh, uh, two or three people that are teaching us, you know, uh, what dropshipping is and how to do it and all of that. Uh, so it was two physical meetings, two or three more online meetings, something like that. But you can say that I quickly learned, you know, once I learned the basics and I knew where, how to, where to take it from there, um, I stopped going to the, to the classes because, you know, I already learned what I wanted to learn. And from here, I just wanted to go and take off on my own. Nice. And after that, you continued to improve your knowledge somehow, or the course was enough for you just to become? Uh, the, cor the course wasn't enough. The reason that I took the course was I just really wanted to know how to start. Like, show me how I can get a store, show me how I can find products. And, you know, show me a little bit about customer service, you know, under what kinds of conditions you can do certain things, you can take certain actions. I just wanted to learn, you know, the basic part of everything about dropshipping. Uh, so that's why, you know, the two uh, online, uh, the two classroom physical meetings was enough. Uh, but after that, I had to keep my knowledge going by uh, one, once, you know, you dip your feet in the water, once you jump inside and, you know, you start sw swimming with, with the sharks, you see what's going on. Uh, you see what works more and what works less. So uh, it's also trial and error. Uh, but I also, you know, kept up with uh, dropshipping uh, uh, blogs and uh, news, you know, to always learn on what's going on, uh, what's new in the industry, because this information is always valuable and it always helps. Great. And what, what were your first steps, basically? So you just created your store and started to list products just like that? Uh, so I did what, you know, they taught me to do in the course. So I already had my eBay account because I had a buyer account. I never actually sold anything on it. So we just used uh, our buyer accounts and we turned them into seller accounts. And then they taught us how to, you know, find your first uh, uh, product, how to find uh, good selling products that you can actually drop ship successfully and not, you know, products that will never sell. And what were your first steps? Basically, you just created your store and started to list products just like that. I started uploading my first products. The first, uh, the first products that I uploaded to eBay was manually. So I actually, you know, downloaded all the images from the supplier, 
Um, I copied all of the titles and the text and I just pasted everything into the right text field. And, you know, it takes whatever time it takes. But in the beginning, I did everything manually because I really wanted to learn the system and all of the options and the settings. And after my first uh, 10 products, I already synced it with uh, AutoDS so I can start automating everything. Uh, because I already understood, I already knew exactly how much time this is going to take if I continue doing it manually. And, you know, when you're starting to, when you're trying to foresee the future and see how much work it's going to take to get to the results that you want to get, you realize that you really need to also automate this business and you can't do everything manually unless you only want to make just a few bucks a month. I see. And uh, how much time did it take you to get your first sale? Uh, my first sale came pretty quick, actually. Um, two days, not more than that. And I was actually really, really shocked because I only had less than 10 products on my store. I think I only had up to 10 products. So I was really shocked because it was like the third or fourth uh, product that I uploaded. So I was really happy about that. It came really quick. And as soon as it came, I quickly became addicted because I didn't think, I, I still didn't think it was going to be easy, even though my first sale was easy. But once you get that first sale and you make your first Wi-Fi money, you can definitely see how you want to scale this and just make so much more than that. That's insane. Um, it's cool to get your first sale so quick. <laughs> uh, may, may I ask you what, what, what was the first product that you sold? Yeah, the first product that I sold was uh, sanding disks. Uh, just these sanding disks. It, it was from Amazon. It was like a 75 pack for like $10. Uh, I saw that some seller was, sell was selling sanding discs, a whole bunch of uh, like 10 pack, 20 pack, 30 pack, whatever. I saw that it was going really well for him. So I searched Amazon for that product and I found products that relate to that one, uh, different bundle packs of those sanding discs. I uploaded them and yeah, so after two days, it was like my third or fourth item that sold. Uh, it was the first item that sold from the third or fourth one that I uploaded. So once again, I was really excited about that. It's, it's, in, it's crazy. It's insane. Um, so you said that in your daily life, you were working for as a, a salesman for a computers company. Um, and okay. when, when you joined dropshipping, did you know that it will become like a big income for you or it was just to do some extra money from a side job? It, it definitely started as extra money. My wife was pregnant and, you know, we both had jobs. It's not like we were, you know, in the gutter and we came from nowhere and now we're super rich. No, my wife was pregnant. I wanted to make some extra bonuses, some extra income. Um, we both had full-time uh, full jobs, but... You know, in our world, full-time jobs usually isn't enough. Uh, so you want, you know, you want to have more, you want to have extra. So when my wife was pregnant, I realized that um, we were not making, our income was good enough, but it, but it, it, it could be much better and I could, I could make it much better. Uh, so I started looking for those ways to make it, you know, to improve my income. And so that's when I started looking up uh, dropshipping. So that's how I started to think about dropshipping. And once I started doing it, and, you know, I started making, you know, the first uh, month is about 50 or 100 bucks profit. And it starts to multiply itself really, really quick, you know, the more work you put in. It became, it started as a bonus. Um, today, it's still a bonus, just a very, 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 very big bonus that I'm really depending on. But yeah, I've been doing it for the last four years. Uh, it keeps getting better and better. And I can't tell you what it's what, what happened this year with the COVID-19. You know well enough what happened with the sales. I was really, really shocked this year when the COVID-19 struck, you know, when I saw how it affected uh, the e-commerce industry and my specific eBay stores and other specific eBay dropshippers, you know, that I know. How did you combine the daily job with uh, the dropshipping, like... Did you do that in the morning, in the evening, in the, during your daily job? How, how did you manage to yeah. work for both, like on both so, businesses? Yeah, so when you have a full-time job, it's, uh, it's pretty difficult. You can't do it during the work hours. So I always found, um, you know, the in-betweens uh, after work while my wife was, um, you know, either making dinner or, you know, after we both finished our showers and now it's like uh, sit in front of the TV time. So I didn't really like TV time too much. I mean, I like it, but I just found something that's much more interesting for me to do. 
So that was uh, having the laptop on my lap, um, just finding products all day and, and optimizing my store and uploading more products, just focusing on growth. Because once I had my first sell and my wife was pregnant with the baby, I really knew that I have to scale this because I can and because I should. There was nothing to hold me back, just the work hours, which you just mentioned. It's, it's a real problem. So I had no choice but to, to just do it in the after work hours, Fridays and Saturdays, where in Israel, most people don't work uh, during those couple of days. So I used to just pack in as much work as I can during those couple of days. And, you know, it's just don't let my eyes and my brain get tired until they automatically shut me down around 12 uh, a.m. at midnight. That's usually my last working hour. I can't handle it anymore. And then I just go to sleep, wake up in the morning to a new refreshed day. Oh, yeah. um, that's a good uh, way to start and to optimize your uh, time. Um, yeah. and, and sorry for interrupting you, but I, I still love waking up every morning to, you know, open my phone, see the notifications, how many products I sold and, um, you know, how much profit, you know, I made yesterday, how much I want to make today. So it's always something that's, you know, working in your head, no matter how many years you're doing it. Yeah. And you're not chasing, you know, you're not just chasing dreams like so many things that I see on the internet of, you know, making money online, because this actually really exists. It actually really works. And, you know, once again, I'm happy to, I'm happy that I got to where I am and I can't wait to see where I can take it from here. So it's like an addiction to hear the teaching from you. Yeah. It's an addiction. It's a hobby. And it just becomes something that you really like to do. Like you, you don't feel that you're forced to do it. You're not forcing yourself to do it. You want to do it. So that's one of the things that I love the most about it. So it's a fun that basically also brings you profits. Yep. A fun way to profit for sure. Nice. Um, can you tell us a bit about how did you find the first product that uh, we discussed? Yeah, so they taught us in the course to snipe other people's products, which is something that I, that I used to do a lot in the beginning, which is important because this way you do learn which products you can sell and which products you can't sell. So when you're sniping products in the beginning, sniping products means taking products from other people who are selling them and just copying them one by one, you know, copy the titles, copy the product descriptions and all that, sell it for a lower price. And then it's just, you know, a game of let's see who can sell lower or who can even lose profit just, you know, just to make a sell. I don't love this method too much, but for beginners, it is good because once again, you can learn what you can dropship and what you can. Okay, so I can't sell uh, houses or refrigerators or, or, you know, complete video game consoles or whatever, but I can definitely sell their repair parts and replacement parts and, and you know, all kinds of uh, products that are hard to find, uh, which are connected to main products, which you cannot sell. So so when you're sniping products and you're seeing what's going well for other dropshippers, dropshippers and you're copying it, um, it's one of the best ways to learn about, you know, what you can find. But today I'm not sniping any products anymore. I haven't been, I don't remember the last time I sniped products. Uh, today people are sniping me. So every time I have a new order, I, I try not to do it. But every time I have a new order, I, um, I could, you know, search up the product that I, that I sold. So I search for the title, which I create, which I optimize by myself. And then I could see at least for each product that I sell, at least four or five other dropshippers after one day of selling my first, you know, after selling a product for one time, other dropshippers who are already copying it automatically. So I understand it. I started that way too, but it's better to be, you know, the head of the fox than the tail. That's how I started uploading products. Yeah, that's how I started finding products in the beginning. Today, it's a different story. Also, basically, you also answered my next question, which was about um, if the strategy changed with uh, the time. So I understand that now you are not sniping people anymore, but you are finding the niches and trying to be more creative by yourself. Yeah, so with time, you learn to find the products yourself. You know which categories are selling hot. You also know which categories are seasonal. So, you know, like end of the year, Q4, you're going to go for the Halloween and New Year's products, uh, for example. So you know which products are, which categories are seasonal. You know which categories are uh, evergreen issues, which are going, you know, all year long. 
uh, you start to learn that the more you drop ship and really the more work you put in, the more success you're going to see in this um, in uh, drop shipping because that's what it's all about. If it was as uh, easy as some people tend to think or believe that it is, then everybody would be doing it and then there wouldn't be room for more people. But today, uh, not a lot of people know about drop shipping. Uh, it's, it doesn't have a super easy learning curve. But the more work you put in it, you're, you're definitely going to find your success that way. So my strategy did change from the beginning. Today, I'm not sniping products. I know exactly which uh, categories are going well. So I, you know, every couple of days, I go to the new releases and I just upload all of the new products in those categories because that way you can easily find, you know, best sellers and quickly get to 20 or 30 sales on just one product. Um, and when you're optimizing your own titles and when you're optimizing your own product descriptions and item specifications, you're going to be seen a lot, a lot more than other people who are um, using the same products and trying to sell them. So today people are copying my listings, which on one hand, I take it as a compliment. On the other hand, I do see that sometimes it works for them. I do see that sometimes they sell it instead of me. But at the end of the day, I'm getting the most sales and the most profit. Yeah, because you're also the first one who will be promoted more by eBay because you have more sales history, right? Right. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a combination of a, of a few things, the sales history, but sometimes people are, when people are really focusing on my store, sometimes they even, uh, they take my products even before they sell as, so, as, as soon as I upload them, uh, two days la later, they're going to upload them too. They're trying to catch it before I catch it because they see that I'm, you know, catching the trends. Uh, but I have no problem with it. Um, I'm still getting most of the sales, even when they copy me. Uh, eBay is also looking at your feedbacks. They're looking at your shipping uh, policies. Uh, they're looking at a few different things to list you uh, more or less than other drop shippers. So I'm usually at the top. Um, no matter what happens, if you see a product, I'm always the one who sold it the most. People are sniping me successfully, but once again, the most of the sales are always going to go to me. And that's okay. the advantage of, uh, of optimizing your own products and being original with what you're doing instead of just copying one-on-one. -on -one. Both methods work. One requires more work and will get better results. And one more thing about um, getting better search results for your account, uh, besides the feedbacks and, um, and other things, is your customer service. The way you handle your customer service is really, really, really important and crucial uh, and, and essential when it comes to your placement in uh, eBay searches, you have your uh, above standard and your top rated. By the way, a lot of people are asking why am I, you know, just above standard and not top rated. I want to be top rated. I've been to both places and every week or so eBay puts me back in above standard and then a top rated again. And then they're putting me in above standard and then top rated. They're playing with it all the time. And I'm seeing no real difference between being above standard and top rated. So people don't worry about that. Anything below above standard, will decrease your overall search results on eBay search engine on Cassini. So don't get to below standard. If you, if you just know how to handle basic uh, customer service, there's no reason why you should go below, below standard. You should always be above standard or top rated. Really, there's no reason why you should be below that unless you purposely don't care about your business or your customers or you just worked with a really, really bad supplier and just had really bad luck. But this is not something that should happen to most drop shippers. So uh, good uh, account status, healthy account status is very, very important. And it all goes with your customer service. Cool. Um, you said that you optimize your uh, eBay listings. What, uh, do, what do you do there? Like uh, what do you optimize and how? Yeah, so eBay is all about keywords. It's a, it's a, it's a keyword marketplace. They just care about your, they care about a few things, but the most important thing is your product's title. So the more you optimize your product's title, the better your search results are going to be. In the end of the day, people are uh, logging into eBay and they're just searching for what they want to buy. It's different from when they go to Google and Facebook and they search for what, you know, what they want to see or friends they want to go after or, 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 you know, just websites when they're searching on eBay, they're searching for a product that they want to buy. So the better your keywords, uh, the more they are connected to what the buyer is typing, the, the higher the chance that they're going to see your listing instead of other people's listings. So it's all about, a, it's all about keywords. It's a keyword game. Uh, that's what, that's how it's always been on eBay. And the best way to learn titles in my opinion is to just see what other sellers are selling 
like people are doing to me, uh, and take their titles and find products that also match this title. Even if you change a few words, and I advise you to change a few words, I hate seeing the same titles over and over again on eBay. Change a few things in the, in, the, in the title, change a few words in the title, it'll quickly make it your own unique title. Find products that are like it, and this is one of the best ways to find uh, profitable products to sell on eBay. And this is uh, one of the methods, methods that I still use today. So I optimize the title. It's the, it's really the most important thing. There's other things. There's a product description. You know, I look for typos. I look for grammar mistakes. Not everybody. Uh, it really depends on your, you know, on your English level. If you can do this stuff, it doesn't matter if you don't, it's not a big deal, but the title is the most important. Next is your uh, item specifications, which is also really important. Uh, um, recently eBay really wants to know about your specifications. They want to know the items type. They slowly want to know about more item specifications. In my case, Every product that I uploaded always had a product type, always had a product material. So I've, I, I, I've had friends who sent me screenshots, 1,500, 3,000, 5,000 item specifications required now. You have to put them now, otherwise we're going to kill your listing. And I didn't get any. I, I got like less than 10 that maybe I forgot. So uh, that's another advantage that uh, I had optimizing my listings along the way. Uh, but once again, the title is the most important item specifications are, are important also. And the body text, the description, the fields, if your English is good, go over that, um, delete the typos, delete the, the person's name from Amazon, the seller's name from Amazon. Many times it gets, uh, or from Amazon, from AliExpress, doesn't matter what supplier you're using. It usually gets copied into your text field. So I delete that too. That's the basic optimization. But once again, mostly the titles. Nice. Um, cool. So it's, it's impressive. Do you do that really for every of your listings or all of your yeah. listings? Yeah. So in the beginning, like for example, when I had only a thousand listings in my store, the way to optimize a thousand listings, you can't do a thousand in a day or in two days. So every day I would do an average of 33 listings and then 33 listings at the end of the month after 30 days is 999. So I know that if every day I optimize 33 listings, then at the end of the month, all of my 1,000 products uh, I, uh, listings are super optimized and I can go on to uploading uh, more products. So that's how I used to uh, do it in the beginning. Um, today, I just have thousands of products, so I can't really go over 33 or 50 or 100 or however, however much it is a day. Um, and this is why I also recommend using virtual assistants for people with many, many products in their stores. This is a perfect time to use VAs to start optimizing your products because you won't have time for it uh, at the end of the day, once you start scaling. Um, yeah, but that's a different subject. Cool. Um, we, think we discussed about the customer uh, service and how important it is for a dropshipping store. Um, so my question to you is, do you do that in a specific hour in a day or you split it over the day? How do you manage it? Yeah, this is actually a really good question, especially especially for people who are working or who are also doing something else on the side of job shipping and it's not their uh, full time job. For people who still have uh, side time jobs and more stuff uh, on side of job shipping, you really have to maintain your time correctly. So on one hand, I was uploading and optimizing my products in the evening time, but in the morning time before, you know, as soon as I wake up and before I hit to work. Um, so let's say I have to uh, drive to I had to drive to work at um, I had to be at my office at nine am in the morning so i'll wake up at 7 and from 7 30 to 8 i would work only on my customer service uh, because i really want to get that out of the way you know when the day starts you don't want problems you don't want this headache so i would start with my customer service uh handle my any open requests uh returns order cancellations and stuff like that i would start the day with customer service and at the end of the day in the evening when i come back from my job I would go to, you know, upload products and optimize them and stuff like that because I won't have enough time to do it all during the evening. You all know exactly how much time you have during the day and how much time you can't uh, dedicate to sitting in front of your computer and drop shipping. So you really have to play with what time you have left and see exactly how you're going to manage that. And if you're going to mix a lot of things together, it's just going to get all messy and it'll never be organized. So in my case, I took care of customer service in the morning and I took care of optimizing and uploading new products in the evening. So basically what to say is that it's all about uh, optimization. No, like time optimization. 
Yeah, yeah. On eBay, it's all about time management. Uh, and not just time management. It's also, you know, the amount of stuff that you have in your store because some people just upload, you know, 10 or 15 products and then, you know, they wait a week or two and they're like, oh, what the heck? I'm not getting any sales. Maybe this is not the right thing for me. And then they leave. So it's all about, you know, managing your time, but also managing your stores correctly. Okay. Um, let's uh, jump about uh, and talk about... Um, some things that will help people more to understand how to scale their business and then we will also discuss what you already did in Autodesk and our future plans. Um, so first, uh, I would like to ask you if you face any problems during your way as a dropshipper and if so, what were the problems? Um, I don't think that there is such thing as a that there is a, such thing as a successful dropshipper who didn't have problems along the way or, or any successful person in that matter. And in my case, the, the biggest thing that happened uh, this year was when Amazon started uh, locking accounts. They started locking uh, people who were using uh, uh, discounted gift cards. Uh, they started locking accounts just one by one and locking people in with their money. So I personally lost uh, not too much, uh, six or $700 from uh, locked accounts. It bothered me a little. Just it, it, I didn't care about losing the six or $700 because if you're, if you're making more than that, then you didn't really lose this amount. You just didn't make enough. You didn't make as much as you were supposed to make, but you didn't really lose any money. Um, what bothered me the most about it is just to see where we're gonna take it from here. What's gonna happen to our dropshipping businesses because Amazon is locking down accounts or closing accounts. I have no way to purchase. Um, I had, you know, I, so I had one account. I quickly made it six accounts. I quickly made 10 accounts to see if I can, you know, have this work out. I even, there was a short time where I myself was an Amazon account supplier for many dropshippers who needed Amazon accounts. I just found this one supplier who knew how to create accounts and I was using him. I was, I was dropshipping him, <laughs> his services to dropshippers who didn't, who just couldn't process their orders like me. Uh, and I made a lot of money from that for the two months that I did that. But uh, that's just one of the creative things that I did along the way with the problems that we had. But besides that, so we had the problem that Amazon was just closing down accounts and locking them down and you can have 10 accounts and the next day only two will still be active and there was no way to fulfill um, uh, our orders. And that I, I, I pretty much thought that I'm gonna leave the dropshipping industry at this point. Um, I was also working with uh, AliExpress, which is also a nice uh, Chinese supplier. You know, there's still profits there, but my big profits, the big money was coming from Amazon. And uh, I thought that I might have to quit. And on one of the last days when I realized that I have nowhere to go, and this is probably, you know, the end of the road, which is a really, really bad mindset to have, but it was just, uh, you know, you asked about the toughest times that we had. So that was my tough time. And I contacted you during that time for the first time. And I told you that, you know, um, uh, you told me that, you know, you're, you're doing this fulfilled by auto DS service to, uh, to fulfill other people's uh, uh, orders, uh, their Amazon orders without having to have their own Amazon purchase accounts, which are all pretty much dead. So, you know, auto DS has their own buyer accounts and they never lock. So you can just join my service and I'll, take care of all of your orders for you. You don't have to worry about it. So I, I jumped on that, you know, that train and you actually solved a really huge problem for me back then, Lior, up until today. Um, so I've been using that service up until today. I love it. I, I, didn't opt, I didn't automate any of my orders even before, even with my own buyer accounts, I used to log into Amazon and buy them, you know, for myself. And after using the Fulfilled by AutoDS service, I just realized like, wow, you don't know what you're missing until, you know, until you have it in front of you and then it gets taken away from you and then you know you appreciate what you have. So that's exactly what, uh, what I had there and you really saved me there, uh, I have to admit. So that was one of the problems. Another problem that we had uh, was the coronavirus. So many dropshippers, thousands of dropshippers who were working only with AliExpress or only with Chinese suppliers, which I definitely recommend not to do. You should always work with two or three suppliers, which some of them are Chinese, some of them are American. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. But many dropshippers who were doing that during the COVID-19 situation, um, you know, at some point there were no, there was no such thing as Chinese suppliers who are working anymore. They, the, the warehouses were closed down. There was no way to ship them out. So many people didn't have any way to issue out their um, uh, Chinese uh, orders, you know, orders from the Chinese uh, suppliers. 
And so many dropshippers quit the industry, quit the dropshipping industry because of the COVID-19 situation. On the other hand, you have the dropshippers who are working with American suppliers and they profited well, and I'm one of them. So I lost all of my AliExpress uh, products for, you know, for two or three months, I didn't have too many AliExpress sales, but Amazon on the other hand worked wonders. So that's also one reason why you should always work with more than one supplier. Um, and that's another problem that I had, but it wasn't, as, uh, it wasn't such a big problem because, you know, I had Amazon, which uh, gave me a lot of profit. The biggest hey, so, problem so. was when Amazon locked accounts. That was the biggest one. So here we can learn about the importance of the uh, splitting between different uh, suppliers. Yeah, yeah. Diversifying your supplier list, working with at least two or, three, two or three suppliers and not all from one region. So if one is from China, you should also have a US supplier. You can even have UK suppliers. There's many suppliers to be working with, but never work with only one because you never know what might happen. You never know and you don't want you know, your business to be at risk because of that. Okay, cool. Okay, so we talked about uh, how you find products, how you optimize them. We talked about this, that uh, you shouldn't really always copy people, but only maybe in the beginning just to catch uh, how it works and then move to your own uh, products. And uh, we talked about the importance of the customer support. Um, what, if, you, if you would choose one thing in your business, what would you say that the most important part of your dropshipping business right now? It, it, it can only be one, but I'm going to, I'm going to quickly just, you know, put them together. So one is customer service, which, which we already talked about, because if you're not going to have good customer service, your store is not going to hold no matter how good your products are selling. Uh, so customer service two, product research. If you're uploading EU11 products, they're most likely not going to sell. So you have to know how to conduct the right product research. And, you know, like we talked before, maybe sniping from other people in the beginning and then slowly learning which products sell well. Uh, so product, uh, customer service, product research. Um, and one big mistake that this is what I want to talk about, which I notice a lot of job shippers uh, are doing, a lot of beginner job shippers who don't have a lot of faith in the system in the beginning. They don't, you know, they, they, they see some YouTube videos. They try to learn from that. They upload five or 10 products products or 15 products and then at the end of the day they're not hitting any sales and they're asking why am i not selling uh what's what's wrong with me maybe this dropshipping thing doesn't work and then you know they go around spreading news that dropshipping doesn't work or that it's dead or, or so forth and it's never true so the most uh, one of the most important tips that i can give is just don't think that 10 or even 100 products are gonna get you anywhere it's probably not you have to learn the market you have to see which products sell and you can't learn that from up to 100 products. So you're going to have to have a few hundred products at least in order to start seeing uh, views and watchers and traffic and, you know, hopefully start hitting some sales from your first 100 products. But if you're going to have anywhere between, if you're going to have anywhere below 1,000 products, you're not going to hit any good numbers and you're not going to be able to research the market in any good way. You have to hit the 1,000 first and then you start optimizing, okay, this one is not going well. This one does look pretty well. So let's try to upload uh, products that are similar. This one sold. So let's upload more colors and more um, measurements, different measurements. So you start playing with that more, but you're never going to do that with a hundred products. Never. So this is one of the things that I really want to uh, pass out to all of you beginners. It's not going to happen from the first few hundred products, but it will happen the more work that you put into it. So, don't lose faith in the work because once you do it, you will see the results. Once you have a thousand listings, they will sell. You will learn what, what sells more and what sells less and which products you should focus on. I'm not saying 1000 is the optimal number. You need to have 10,000 listings if you want to see, you know, if you want to stop working at whatever job you're working at now, but you will get to that after your first thousand and you start optimizing it from there. Thanks for uh, sharing. Um, okay, so um, let's jump into a bit different uh, talk and that's about this. That basically, you joined uh, AutoDS team around uh, three months ago um, to help the dropshipping community to improve their knowledge and to share your experience with people. Um, so I would like to ask you a few questions about that and then we will finish uh, this uh, helpful interview with all of the knowledge that you shared here. Um, so, 
what made you to decide to uh, quit your job and join an AutoDS uh, uh, team? Yeah, so today I'm working for AutoDS. Um, I'm the content producer. I'm creating you know, the content, writing the blogs, uh, uh, creating the videos, as you obviously know, uh, for the viewers. I'm doing it for a few reasons. One, because I can, because I like it. Um, I, my old job was okay. I could have kept being a robot and, you know, I could have kept doing that until hitting my pension or whatever, but you also want to enjoy the adventure along the way. And since it's something that I, that I really believe in because I'm actually doing it, uh, for the past four years. So, you know, you're not just doing it for a month or two after four years, you know, you, you definitely have a much clearer picture of, of, of what you want to do and where you can take it. So four years was enough for me to understand that this is uh, this can really be a full time thing. Uh, I love AutoDS. Obviously, I've been using it since uh, day one, pretty much. The service is great. I I'm not gonna lie to you. I did try other monitors, other drop to, uh, other drop shipping software along the way because I, you know, it's like product research. You, you want to research more things. You want to see what other options you have. I quickly came back to AutoDS uh, after trying uh, three or four different tools. And it's been four years and the customer service is amazing. Um, the speed is amazing. Um, the, the mistakes, I mean, there's like practically no mistakes. And when you're doing things manually, there's a lot of human error, you know, just simple human errors that you can make along the way, like updating the wrong tracking information or sending the wrong message to the wrong buyer or uploading the, the wrong print label for a return. And, and, you know, this stuff can cost you so much or shipping to the wrong uh, customer address. So many things can go wrong when you're doing it manually and it can cost you so much money. So using AutoDS and along with the order automation was just, wow. I mean, it's been like that for the past few years. It's like that today. So I realized why not work in this? You have the knowledge, you have the information and you can also teach. You can also give a lot of value to people who haven't done it yet to people who are doing it, but are not so successful at it. Um, I taught a couple of friends to drop ship just to see if I can do it, just, you know, to see if, you know, if, if I even like it and the amount of value and knowledge that I gave them when I realized the, the value of it, um, then I also realized that this is something that I can, you know, actually work on and benefit from while also giving a whole lot of value that is missing today. Uh, there are a lot of YouTubers, there are a lot of channels. Some of them are good. Some of them are less but none of them can really have all of the information centered for you um, on all kinds of different subjects of dropshipping. So this is something that I really also wanted to, uh, you know, do for AutoDS. So not just, you know, have it uh, all in one dropshipping platform, which it is, but make it more of a all in one e-commerce platform with everything on everything on e-commerce and dropshipping, which is something that I haven't seen many other people doing. Um, so this is, uh, so yeah, I believe in good information. I believe in valuable information. A lot of it is missing. And this is one of the things that I want to give to you guys. So you can already check out the blog section of auto DS. You can already check out some of the videos that I already uploaded. This is just the beginning and it's definitely going to keep getting better and better all because I really want to give you guys this value because I really want to see you guys succeed just like I did, just like my friends and some of my family members did. And just like you should. So first, thank you very much for joining the team. It was a perfect fit and we really uh, were looking for uh, someone to, to do that for a long time because it's uh, one of our first priorities not to be only a tool, but we also want to be a community. We want to help people to succeed together and we want to be their knowledge base and we really to help them to succeed because if people will uh, succeed more, it means that uh, AutoDS will uh, become a more successful platform and everyone will benefit from that. So really thank you for all of the knowledge that you uh, share with people and we already started to do uh, great things there. Um, I don't want to share uh, what were the last content that we released in the past uh, month, for example, to our blog and uh, YouTube channel. So people uh, will be able to go and uh, also uh, check this. Sure. So the last month was packed with uh, getting ready for Q4. Uh, there was the Q4 webinar, which you did uh, last week. Um, so the content and the videos are packed now with uh, Q4 dropshipping products and strategies, what products you guys should be on the lookout for. 
uh, strategies, how to, um, you know, all, all kinds of different ways to upload them and to find more products, which are going to be relative for uh, this Q4. And this Q4 is really going to be better than any other Q4 that we had. I'm going back three Q4s. This is my uh, fourth or fifth one now. Um, I'm excited to be into it. We're already, we're, we're, we're already into Q4. But if you guys uh, would go into the content section right now, into the articles, you'll see what products you guys need to upload for Christmas, for, um, for Halloween, for uh, Thanksgiving, for Black Friday, Cyber, Cyber Monday. So we have all of the content on that, which is already ready, the blogs and the videos and what you should do. Um, uh, there was a few more updates. You know, every time there's a new update and people are getting stuck and they have no idea what to do, like just last week, eBay made an update about their... Um, uh, about their seller protection, how they're going to give you guys uh, seller protection or not give out any more seller protection. Many people do not see these updates and, you know, they only learn about them after being slapped in the face with them by eBay. So one of the things that I'm also trying to do is to update as soon as updates come out. So you guys won't miss out on anything and your stores will definitely not be affected by it. So it's another reason why you guys should always check out and, you know, refresh that blog page. But yeah, like I said, I'm always going to give out the valuable information on time. And right now, Q4 is definitely the hot topic that's going on right now in our blog section. So go ahead and check that for sure. Great. Um, so, uh, yeah, basically, um, as I said, uh, if anyone has any problem, just go to this blog or to this YouTube channel and be sure that you will find out the solutions or just write down in the comments of this video or any other video your questions and uh, we will be able, or Iran will be able to uh, produce a video for that with the answer to the question. And um, so, yeah, if you can write down in the uh, comment section your questions, so we will know what would you like to hear about and produce content about uh, these uh, questions. And um, so, uh, Iran, one last thing that you want to say to uh, our listeners, and then we will uh, roll up this uh, recording. Um, once again, guys, I'm here for one reason and one reason only to give you guys valuable content and valuable information so you guys can really start and succeed in this business. There's no other reason uh, um, that I'm doing this. There's no other interests or any other uh, anything involved. The reason is to help you guys succeed. Uh, it's all 100% brutal honesty. It's all um, stuff that you won't find in other videos and other places. Um, I can, you know, I can definitely vouch for that. And I'm also doing a lot of things from my own experience. Uh, you know, so I'm, you know, as opposed to other people who are just gathering information and, you know, putting it together. So everything here is coming from the heart. It's coming from real experience. It's coming from real hard work. And I really hope that this valuable information will convert into your own success. Great. So it was an amazing interview, Liran. Thank you very much for everything. And uh, see you guys in the next videos and you will see Liran in the next videos. So uh, thank you again. And see you in the uh, next videos. Don't forget to subscribe for our YouTube channel, like this video so other people will see this valuable information. Comment down with any question that you have about dropshipping, e-commerce, and everything that you want to ask us. See you in the next videos. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.